What is up, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, smkw.com, and today I'm joined by Kenton Green from Boker. You are a uh, the regional sales manager. The for regional Boker, sales right? manager for uh, for Boker, so I work for the family. Um, so I cover everything from the southeast, and actually had to add to my title to cover mid Atlantic states because I'd go up to Ohio, and they're like, "Why are you here?" <laughs> so. And we've got some really cool stuff to show you. First of all, we want to say thank you for uh, for giving us these. This is the Boker USB right here, and uh, this is the Blade Show exclusive. Um, they got these to us uh, back during Blade Show, and uh, we're really enjoying these. Uh, we've got these available in our store. Obviously not the Blade Show exclusive, um, but we've got those in our store. Um, and we've got something really cool to talk about here, but before we get started, if you like this video, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, so you'll know when we drop these new videos and give you this really cool behind the scenes information. Now, without further ado, let's light it up. So Kenton, thank you so much for joining us thank today. You for having we me. really appreciate it. Yeah, and this is probably, I would have to say, one of the coolest knives um, that I've seen come across this table. Um, and a as far as the backstory and how it's created and and what it's made of, yeah. um, that is, uh, like I said, one of the coolest stories I've ever heard. So let's, let's talk about this knife. And this is your design, correct? Yes. This is based off of uh, basically what was in my head at the time. Um, what we're doing is we're working with the Americans in Wartime Museum based in Virginia. Um, kind of a three-year project in the making. Uh, it was a lot of uh, uh, turn downs and we don't have things for you. But found these guys uh, just on a whim. Um, super great guys to work with. It's the, the Tank Farm, if you're not familiar with it, is basically the largest private collection in the world. If you've seen a movie with a tank in it, I think since Tank Girl, or even before that, these guys provided those tanks. Wow. Uh, Discovery Channel, History Channel, always go there and, and uh, do their videos on their, their products. So everything there runs, uh, the cause is not just for a, a museum per se, but what they're doing in combination with us uh, and what we're going to be helping out with is part of their veterans outreach program. Now what they do is they have you know RVs set up to where they go around to VFWs, go around to you know retirement homes, and go to these, these, these former soldiers, these veterans' homes, and get their story. You know, as, as history is progressing through, you know, history is not being taught anymore. It's, right. it's being lost. So they, they are doing an a excellent job in, in preserving it. And these stories will be portrayed inside their new museum that they're building now. Wow. Uh, so anybody that, that visits that museum will actually see and hear the, the real stories. That's uh, awesome. So we're we're... Part of the proceeds for the sale of each one of these knives actually go back into those programs, go back into the museum, go back into help, you know, funding these new projects. And we're, you know, super excited to work with these guys. That's really cool. Because it serves, I mean, it serves more than a purpose of just teaching history. It's, right. it's, it's learning more of history. It's preserving history. Yeah. Now, the pieces that we're using here are actually from the M4 Sherman tanks. Um, a lot of questions I get first off is, Oh, great, you named a tank after a Sherman. That's really smart. It's like, no, we actually made a, ta a knife out of a Sherman tank. <laughs> um, Chad, working with Chad Nichols, which is, you know, he's a super cool guy. He, uh, he's doing a lot more projects for us now. But this was, you know, this, this was exciting. Yeah. And we started getting to more of these, these military projects, these history projects. You know, he's, he's all on board. Um, always trying to wonder what I'm going to bring him next. <laughs> But when we brought him the parts, um, these are basically scrap pieces. Right. So when the, the tanks are you know, refurbished, rebuilt, uh, made to run again, there's a lot of excess steel. And instead of it just disappearing into a scrap yard, you know, we, we pick it up from the guys, uh, drive it down to Mississippi, which is a super fun drive when you're <laughs> you know, carrying 1,000 pounds of steel with you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he'll take these, break them down, uh, blend them in with some proprietary stuff, uh, just to, to make it you know more of a hardened steel for for knife purposes. Right. And you know, there we go. You know, we we have our knife. Now the pattern that we came up with 
you know, I'm, I'm, as I'm designing this thing, I'm trying to figure out what would work best. You know, after all the patterns and cool designs that he has, what would look best on this? So came up with like a, a ladder pattern. And each one of them are going to be a little bit different. Right. A little bit offset or you know, a little bit wavy or a little bit straight. It just depends on the run. Yeah. Um, but it's to, to mimic the track patterns. Yeah. To give the knife, you know, more motion. And his Damascus work is just oh, beautiful. beautiful. It's beautiful. The, the, the core carbons and whatnot. Um, the actual design of the knife, I mean, if you really look at it, basically you're covering the front of the tank, curving around to the back. And let's take a look at this right here in with it. You can see um, the design elements here that he's talking about, um, where that design came from, where, in your mind, obviously. Oh, yeah. But I mean, with, you know, with the lockdowns and everything else, we have a lot of time to think. You know, when, when, you're, <laughs> when your territory is 14 hours one way and 17 hours the other way, you get a pl plenty of time behind the wheel to, to think about new projects and right. you know, not go crazy going down the road. But the, the idea behind this size knife, I mean, people are familiar with our turpets knife, our leopard knives, um, you know, in the Damascus, the prior history projects that we did. Right. Um, you know, they're, they're a good size. Yeah. And a lot of people will primarily keep those for more of a display, you know, because they'll be too afraid to take it out to, to, to carry as a, as a regular knife. Right. So what I wanted to do was create an EDC. You know, if, this, if somebody's going to buy this knife, they want to show it off. Yeah. They want to carry it with their friends. They want to say, hey, look what I got. So the way that this is built is for your pocket. Yeah. You know, it's a perfect size. It kind of follows the same uh, middle grade sizes, I guess you could say, we offer with our Boker Plus items. So that you do see, you know, you, you do see more of them. More of them. They're going to be carried out right. and, and used. I want them to be used. Um, you know, what's, what's the, the sense of having it if you're not going to show it off and use it? Exactly. Uh, part of the other materials that we did is, you know, if you look at the pivot point, we're running that to kind of mimic the uh, front drive wheel. Yeah. So a little bit more aspect to it. Screws on the back. Typically, the, the bolts that would, you would see in, say, the top turret. Mm -hmm. The color was fun. Uh, we kind of had some back and forth with some different color options. Um, and actually, I was just walking out of a dealer in uh, Hatteras Island, and they presented a bright green color. Like, eh. <laughs> you know, since this tank was used in so many different ways, you know, in so many different uh, avenues that this tank left for, for World War II, uh, you know, I figured let's let's pay tribute to the Army. Let's pay tribute to the Marine Corps, because predominantly that's who had the tank. Right. That's who relied on that tank. So we took the colors and we blended them together. And the actual micarta maker that we're using, it's a it's a another source that we use. You know, they they love the color. You know, they were they were trying to blend it together, but I'm like, no, that's perfect. And actually, the first 300 that we're doing is going to have more of this pressed. Hated my carta. Right. Um, but like as we were talking earlier, we're both, you know, fuzzy Marcata guys. So yeah. we, you know, we, we like the, the use of my carta because my carta was, you know, always designed as a cloth material so it can get wet. Exactly. You know, it can get blood on it. It can get whatever, but it's also easily cleaned, but it gets tackier. gets yeah. more useful at that point. So this is going to be more of a show item for the first 300. Right. After the 300, then we'll start coming out with this more, uh, I guess, usable right. micarta, if you want to call it that. Textured. Textured. But it's the yeah. same. It's the exact same piece. We just do a different process to it. Nice. Now, what part uh, of the tank is, is the steel in this primarily? For the Sherman, it's various pieces, but predominantly the, the pieces that we got were the front drive wheels. There are, is some armor mixed in there as well, um, but we started out with the actual, oh, I think they're about a 125-pound, Front drive spokes. Right. Uh, <laughs> extremely heavy. Yeah. I uh, like to bounce around the back of a truck going down a Mississippi road. But, you know, the fun part of it is we have enough steel now at this point for, for Chad to make a Damascus house. So, you know, <laughs> I'm waiting for my Damascus car, but we'll see if that ever happens. <laughs> so with that, normally we do uh, limited runs on projects. Uh, this project, instead of it having an end date or an end number, we're just numbering these in sequence because we plan on this being a, a lasting relationship with these guys. Right. You know, I want to be around as long as they are. As long as they're doing their thing, we want to be doing our thing. Right. And we want to help support that. So, as you see here, I mean, it's just basically the numbers that we're running. Um, they're all out of sequence. 
So when you go to your dealer, it's not really a preference on, hey, I want number such and such unless right. they have it in stock. Uh, the way that we like to, to kind of send out our product is we get in the warehouse and we send it, you know, we, we mix up the numbers. Right. So there's no favoritism towards one store or another. Right. So you, you will get a different number, but there will be no end date on it. Right. Uh, some of our other projects that we got uh, coming out, some of our super secret stuff that we'll uh, introduce at SHOT Show are also going to be more World War II projects. Uh, I can tell you now, you know, just off to the side that we're doing uh, a naval series, an air series, on top of we're doing some more tanks. Nice. Uh, the the tanks that we've been able to recover, uh, I'm working with uh, several relic hunters that you can probably find on YouTube now, but uh, they work with local museums, and we get the pieces that the museums reject that they f- have found in the in the dirt somewhere or at a battlefield. Right. So we're getting a lot of pieces out of uh, Latvia, uh, Battle of Narwa, wow. oh um, which includes you know Tiger One, yeah, T thirty four, a few other things. A few other things I got working right now. That is awesome. So each one of these is individually numbered, and all, all of them have a unique number. And like you said, there's no end date. And that also, to me, in my mind, speaks to, uh, like you said before, and, and going back to it, um, working with them as, as far as what they're doing yeah. um, for the veterans and, uh, and telling those stories. And I think that's, that's really cool. Oh, exactly. And uh, that's, uh, I mean... Not only is this an awesome knife and a great piece of history, but you also get the opportunity to contribute to preserving Correct. history. And so I think that's a great tie-in for everything uh, and a, a beautiful knife. And these are available now, correct? Yes, they are available now. Uh, we actually just uh, shipped the first 50. We're coming in at batches so we can get them over faster. Uh, they're being handmade in Germany, so, of course, you know things are taking a little bit while. And, uh, shipping right now is really, uh, really slow Yeah, for everything. Uh, but we are getting them over. Uh, the first 50 have been delivered as a blade show. So, you know, you'll start seeing more and more of these uh, popping up on uh, on the Internet or popping up uh, uh, on your website yeah. uh, as they're delivered here. Um, but, again, the you can tell the first 300 from the continuing 300. Right. Or continuing after 300. Um, that'll be a, a real easy identifier. Yeah. So, you know, everything comes in a presentation box, and I get a lot of calls for these boxes, which everybody tends to love. Um, that is a really cool box. It's, it's an awesome idea, and I've been in this industry for, you know, a good while. I've been in the knife, in the knife industry for at least 16 years. And to have a presentation box instead of a wooden box or, you know, something to sit inside to hide it, you know, when you're offering a box that, Basically, you can display any which way you want. Yeah. Um, we do tell people, hey, these boxes do come apart. Don't cut the plastic. Yeah. <laughs> these, these aren't sealed in. You can take it out, show it off, put it back in, however which way you want to. Um, and these, these do fit a wide range of, of different things. But, um, I mean, perfect way to display it. Yeah. That is absolutely gorgeous. Kenton, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate Appreciate that. And thank you for showing this knife off. Beautiful design. Folks, check those out. We're going to have the link in the description below. Um, And don't know when exactly these are going to be actually in, but they are released right now. They're going to be in very soon. So check out that link. Hit the Notify Me button if they're not in stock, and we will let you know as soon as they do come in stock again. Ken, thank you so much. Folks, if you like this video, again, like, share, comment, subscribe. And remember, if it cuts like a Sherman tank, then we carry it.